Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from ITV's Valaisal channel. They will continue our lab, the Red Alert Lab. This is the video number 25. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been still working with securing our Windows 10 based on the recommendation of the Department of Defense and the Defense Information System Agency of the United States. This is the video number 9 for securing Windows 10. We, has been, we have been working for about now 8 videos. <coughs> discussing the different methods to uh, secure your windows 10 okay so uh, so far the recommendations are very clear they can be implemented easily uh, but take care to implement what is suitable for your environment because this is uh, these recommendations are for highly secured environments something like uh, ministries of defense or uh, military uh, organizations so you need to implement it carefully and test these uh, settings because they may affect your applications or your performance of some of your servers so you need to choose wisely <coughs> what suits your environment okay so <coughs> let's continue for where we have stopped the last time the last time we have stopped at something called basic authentication for rss feeds over http must not be configured uh, so rss this is a kind of websites okay uh, you communicate with okay using uh, or the uh, uh, group policy or the recommendations say that this website that you are communicating with this website should be working with uh, protocol not HTTP okay so it's basically will work with HTTPS or more secure protocols so when you as a client try to connect to a website to read from it or to access it this connection should be secure okay so to secure this connection you should or the website should use uh, https not http okay so what is the rss feed it is a uh, called site summary for really simple syndication it's a web feed that allows users and applications to access updates to websites in a standardized computer or readable format okay so this is something like for example if you need to have uh, update about a certain issue or a certain subjects uh, it is sent to you by email basically okay or uh, so for example uh, i have uh, subscribed to so a couple of rss feeds concerning the microsoft uh, security updates and it is sent to me by email basically okay <laughs> so and how it works i think it's basically it works with uh, uh, outlook mainly okay anyway so uh, this kind of websites are not secure or, or they are not using uh, uh, secure protocols so clients can communicate to them or so users can access the website okay so basically you will have a group policy that will not allow access to rss websites not working with secure protocols especially uh, if the uh, especially HTTPS this is a secure protocol if it's not using HTTPS and it's using HTTP it will not be allowed okay so we can do this using a group policy <coughs> or uh, using a registry key and he's saying that basic authentication so uh, to access the website it should be using HTTPS protocol and uh, to authenticate to the website okay so because i think there is uh, some authentication process to be done for example if you are subscribed to rss feed or a website uh, you should authenticate your username or your account so the authentication uh, so the website should verify that you have a correct username and password this verification to the website should be done using uh, secure protocols not sh not http so anyway we will uh, configure a group policy to uh, uh, block or to prevent basic authentication to the RSS websites using HTTP okay so we'll do this from a group policy first of all we need to see the registry key to do this so we will go to the registry key location or path and then we should see if there is a key called allow basic authentication uh, if it is already uh, there in the registry or not if it's not there then that means that we are allowing basic basic authentication to rss feeds using http so we will not do this 
or we will go to the group policy to uh, disable this option it is the recommendation to leave it as this group policy as to disable HTTP for RSS or not configured and by the way it's by default not configured so we will not do much we just go and see where this uh, group policy resides here you can see that basic authentication is not configured so we are in complete line with our recommendation so here we can leave it as not configured or disabled here we can see too not configured or disabled here is another recommendation it's called indexing of encrypted file must be turned off so uh, if you are searching for something or your computer uh, sometimes the search takes a lot of time okay and sometimes the search is very fast this depends upon your indexing service what we mean by indexing indexing it is something like uh, counting and organizing all of your files on your PC in a certain way so when you when you search for them it will be easy to find so for example if we go to a website and we would say what is indexing for example okay indexing is a data structure which allows you to quickly retrieve records from a database okay so we will take what is meant for Windows here he is trying to uh, organize your file names and their locations in a way that you can retrieve them uh, easily when you search for them so this is indexing so here if you have encrypted files on your uh, workstation or your PC uh, they should not be included in this kind of indexing or this kind of arrangement so uh, hackers can find them easily so here we are saying that we will index normal files but we will not index uh, the encrypted files okay so if you need to go to encrypted file you should uh, memorize the location so this should not be in this indexed okay so anyway this should be done of course for uh, servers that have encrypted data or workstations that have encrypted data and by the way we should encrypt all of our hard disks in all of our domain uh, in workstations or in uh, especially in workstations I think in servers maybe there will be some be some performance issues but it should be mainly uh, encrypted or data should be encrypted on workstations and laptops anyway so we will see uh, that drive searching okay we can see it allow indexing of encrypted uh, store stores or items these are not there this key is not there so that means that we can index encrypted files we need to go and disable this kind of option <coughs> so we'll go to uh, windows search i think or there is something called search yes but i think it is in the uh, computer configuration windows components it is search and then we need to not search or not index okay uh, index encrypted files so this will be disabled this should be disabled okay and then users must be prevented from changing installation options uh, basically no one will be allowed to install unless he is an administrator but if a user uh, bypassed this feature he will not be able to change installation options so he will be forced to use uh, a predetermined predestination pre pre uh, predetermined installation options or the default installation option, uh, options he will not change it okay so you see that installation options for applications are typically controlled by administrators this setting prevents users from changing installation options that may bypass security features okay anyway so uh, administrators would be the only ones uh, responsible for installation of files or installation options for applications are typically controlled by administrators anyway 
uh, the, the installation process as a whole will be uh, controlled by the administrators. No one can install or change installation options unless he is an administrator. But if for any reason this uh, limit or this control was bypassed, the user will not be able to change installation options. That's the minute, guys. So let's continue, guys. As I said before, installation should not be done uh, unless the user is, a, is an administrator. So we will go and tell this is done already by default, but we will increase this security by not allowing users to change installation options for any program. Okay, allow user control over installs, it will be disabled. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, I think this is already uh, done by default, so a standard user could not install uh, software. But anyway, we will see uh, how this will be done. So let's go to the uh, group policy. It's called uh, Windows Installer, so it's Windows Components, Windows Installer, allow user to control installation. So let's go, it is Windows Installer. And then we will go to the uh, allow user control. So he, here we can see that if we go a little bit further. Let's go to the group policy. Here, uh, allow user take control. This policy permits users to change installation options that are typically available, only available to system administrators. So there is some software that may may pass the uh, control or the the option to not install unless it is an administrator. Some users can run some programs or can install some or certain programs I think they are the portable maybe or some uh, programs uh, doesn't require an administrator to install them for example I think anyway so we will control this by not allowing the users to uh, change installation options so this will be done uh, using a group policy allow user to control the Windows installer always install with elevated uh, privileges must be disabled so here is saying uh, if there is a program that should run with administrator privileges this should not be done using uh, uh, the process of elevation what we mean by this if for example you are uh, logged in with a standard user and you try to run a program okay that needs administrator rights he will pop up uh, a window asking to provide the administrator credentials so this process as a whole should be disabled why uh, because if you put your administrator credentials through this elevated window this means that your password will be saved to this machine and the hacker can uh, if he hacked this machine he can know your your administrator uh, uh, passwords okay through this user okay through this the account of this user so anyway this should be disabled he is saying that standard user accounts must not be granted elevated privileges enabling windows installer to elevate privileges when installing application can allow malicious persons and applications to gain full control of a system so here uh, let's uh, say this if a hacker try to uh, uh, run a program okay on a standard user account and he by somehow uh, know the administrator account he can use the uh, elevated privilege window and put the account credentials and access the machine or run the software or whatsoever so we need to uh, disable this kind of things if a program needs to be installed then you should install it by logging in with your administrator account and install the software not by logging into a standard user account and then elevate or run the program by elevated privileges okay he is saying that standard accounts must not be granted elevated privileges so this is what we are talking about standards users should not have or should not 
uh, appear for them the elevated uh, window or elevated privileges window okay enabling installer to elevate privileges when installing application can allow malicious persons and applications to gain full control over the system so if you need to install a program the basic process to be done is to log in with your administrator account and then run the program or then install the program but not by letting the user log in with his uh, standard account and then run the program using elevated privileges uh, window okay so this is not this is not should not be done okay so we need to disable this kind of feature so we will go and and uh, do this using a registry key or using it or you or do this using uh, a group policy okay so just a moment So always install using elevated privileges. This is not a correct issue, and we have said before that we should not uh, do this on a normal machine. Okay, so we should not use elevated privileges. Okay, this should be disabled. If you need to install a program, log in with your account and uh, install the program. Okay, then user must be notified if a web-based program attempts to install software so sometimes if you are accessing a website so for example I have uh, once accessed an HP website and I'm trying to uh, tell or web I, I need the website of HP to scan my hardware uh, to know if I have any uh, uh, not updated drivers for the machine so for example I have an HP machine and I try to access the website of uh, HP and they have a software through their uh, website that can access my machine and scan all of the drivers for the machine and see what are the outdated drivers for the HP machine so this for the website of HP to do this he need to install a software so if you access the website of HP he will install a software or, or he, he will try to install a software on your machine so the website of HP can scan the whole machine for outdated drivers and try to update them so this is one of the things a web-based program a web-based program this is for example the website of HP for an attempt to know if your uh, drivers on your machine are, are, are outdated or up to date he need to install a software okay so this is should the user should be notified if a web-based program attempts to install a software okay this is one of the things you need to take care of this so the user should be notified if something like this happened web-based program attempt to install malicious software on a system ensuring users are notified if a web-based program attempts to install software allows them to refuse the installation the default behavior uh, for internet explorer is to warn the users but anyway internet explorer is not working anymore so uh, i think this should be done uh, in browsers like edge or chrome or firefox i think this is by default uh, uh, an option in all of these browsers they will warn you of it is if there is any installation of any software from websites okay so i think prevent the explorer prompt for uh, windows installer scripts okay i think this is to not configured or disabled automatically sign in the last interactive user uh, after a system initialized restart must be disabled so sometimes if there is are some windows updates uh, for example a user have logged into his machine and then some windows updates came from him uh, came to him sorry uh, using the wsos server if he's in a domain the uh, the windows will install the updates and then will restart the machine okay there is a process if this users uh, if the user or the last user that has logged into the machine to install the updates he will be logged in automatically after the updates are installed so for example if i logged in and then installed some updates and the windows restarted the machine i will find myself logged in I find myself logged in automatically the next time okay so this is not a good option okay you should always be asked for a username and the password to log into the machine not to be logged in automatically 
even if they are in a process of uh, installing of updates so windows can be configured to automatically sign in the user back in after a windows update restart so this is one some protections are in place to ensure or to help ensure this is done in a secure fashion however disabling this will prevent the caching of credentials okay so he will log you automatically uh, of course after he caches your credentials or your credentials will be saved and provided by the windows automatically the next time you restart the machine so this should not be done we need to disable this option okay so we'll do this we will go and do this using a registry key or to you uh, do this using a group policy so this should not be done here we will say that sign in last interactive users automatically after a system initialize restart this should be disabled okay so this is not a good option to uh, to a user and to a hacker of course if a hacker for example uh, successfully tried to uh, hack a machine and the user was already logged in okay or after logged in after uh, a successful installation of windows updates this also could uh, provide a risk anyway so we will check to see if this option is there through the registry uh, disable automatic restart sign in we need to see if this key is in the registry and if the value of this key is zero or it's one sorry because it's disabled so one means it is enabled okay so we need to do this it's not there so we need to go and uh, and make it there or make this option available through through uh, the group policy okay the windows components and then something called windows login okay so here we can see that this the key is not there okay so you need to check and see if this key is there so we need to go to windows components windows log log on options and then disable this option windows log on options and then uh, disable sign in and lock last user automatically this is the one we need to disable this option so this will be to be disabled and then we need to continue working here is saying that powershell block logging uh, must be enabled here he is trying to uh, uh, audit and record any changes in the powershell or any uh, things done by the powershell so if there is a hacker try to access the powershell and issue some commands to hack your machine this should be uh, recorded so enabling this option will allow or enabling powershell script block will record detailed information for the processing of powershell commands and scripts this can provide additional detail when when mal malware has run on your system so this is an audit option for powershell okay so we need to enable it to have more information about uh, malicious activities done by hackers or by malware okay so this should be done also so these are all uh, audit options some of these recommendations are audit options to uh, enable you to trace uh, malicious activities on your machine so turn on powershell scripting i think this will be done using uh, first of all we need to check from the registry we all know that it is a procedure in all of our recommendations for this uh, ministry of defense to check the registry first to see if it is enabled and then we can enable this uh, uh, recommendation using a group policy or directly by editing the registry itself <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> <coughs> so we can see that it's not enabled powershell it's not enabled so we need to go and enable this using the group policy sorry i have mistaken closed the group policy so we'll go and check it okay we need to go and turn turn on powershell so we go windows components windows powershell 
it's not in the audit policy by the way it's very strange something related to the powershell audit or audit should be in the audit section anyway so we'll go to windows components <coughs> and then go to the powershell <coughs> windows powershell and then uh, turn on powershell block scripting so we will enable it this is one and then we should uh, continue working there is another group also also concerning uh, auditing of the powershell but we will go further here uh, powershell tra transcription must be enabled on windows 10 so this is also related to <coughs> sorry auditing the powershell to get more info about uh, what is done using the powershell so this is also something it is saying that <coughs> uh, that uh, the transcript output directory should po should point to a central log server or another location secure to prevent user access so he's saying that uh, these logs especially the powershell transcription logs should be moved to a location that the user can't access or to a central log server this is a server that will collect logs from all of your machines in the domain so he is specifying that especially the powershell transcription logs should be saved to a secure location or to a centralized log server or uh, to a place where the users can't access okay so this is one of the things just a w just a moment guys so let's continue guys as I said before we need to uh, enable more auditing for the powershell commands and uh, 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 powershell commands and uh, outlets okay or something so uh, enabling this group policy will uh, help us to audit more uh, powershell commands and this type of powershell transcription commands should be saved to a centralized uh, local server uh, local log server or uh, a secu another secure location to prevent user access let's continue we need to go to the group policy and enable it okay and uh, uh, point to the location where these powershell audit logs or powershell transcription logs should be saved you can save it to a location secure location or to a central log server okay so uh, let's go to the other one here uh, windows explorer uh, preview pan must be disabled what is the preview pan a preview pan is simply this okay it gives you uh, or if you for example open this one or open this folder the preview pan if we can see it from here preview pan okay here it will be enabled if you just click on the file it will give you a preview about the file for example if it's a photo or something it will display the file contents this is the preview pan this is uh, uh, dangerous somehow because you can uh, for example if there is a file uh, that contains uh, uh, a virus or something it will be previewed or it will be executed using the preview uh, pan okay so we need to disable this option okay and let's see what is the, rec the recommendation the recommendation uh, a known vulnerability in windows 10 could allow the execution of malicious codes by either opening a compromised document okay or viewing it in the preview pan so maybe there is a document uh, for example if it's a word document the preview pan could display its content so it will open it partially and display its content okay so maybe this word document contains a malicious code for example a vb code or v a visual basic code or something so we need to disable preview pan and detail pan okay this is uh, two things that will allow you to have a sneak peek on a file contents okay so we need to do this uh, using a registry key as we have said before or using a group policy okay so this should be disabled okay so i think let me show you what is the the detail pan i think the detail pan if this is it let me see for example if we open this one and view something called detail pans so this is the same 
if you open this one so it will give you a sneak peek about the file and some contents user experience anyway so this should be disabled this should be disabled and this should be disabled okay so we need to close these options because it will allow malicious codes to be executed so we need to go to see if it is already enabled through the registry or through browsing the registry keys we can go and see and if it's not uh, or this option if it's not enabled sorry if it is enabled we need to disable it so we can go and see for example no preview pen if there is a key or a registry key called no preview pen and its value is zero then that means that we have disabled the preview pen okay so let's go and see this so let's go to the location okay we don't see it here so we need to enable it using a group policy ensure that the following are configured locally or, locally or applied a group policy okay so this can be done using the local group policy or a domain group policy so we can see that the preview pan is enabled this option is enabled so we need to disable or enable turn off preview pan and to turn off detail pan enable and configure detail pan always hide okay so this is the two options we need to configure to disable these two preview pans okay or to these two pans okay two windows pans okay so let's see here we can this is not from the computer side this will be this will be from the user side so we all know that the group policy has two sides a part to be applied to the computer and the part to be applied to the user so this group policy is applied to the user side okay here we can see that I can't find it in the computer side so we need to uh, check the group policy user side okay it is the user configuration not the computer configuration okay so we need to go and see So this is the computer configuration the other one for for the computer configuration and this is for the user configuration so we need to check the user configuration just need to minimize all of these group policies and then maximize the user side group policy then administrative templates windows components i think maybe uh, yes windows components and then file explorer yes this is the Windows file explorer. Okay, if you go up, so go a little bit up, then file explorer, and then we need to check the explorer pan, turn off detailed pan, tell him to enable, and then to always hide or enable, and then configure detailed pan always hide. <laughs> okay, enable, and then always hide. Okay, so this is it need to always hide this one and then turn off preview pan and then enable so we have these two options enabled so this is another group policy to be configured okay now we can continue working with our recommendations windows uh, remote management uh, client must not use basic basic authentication so what is Windows Remote Management? This is a protocol. Uh, let me see first. Let me show you. Let I'm not sure it's a protocol, but let me uh, search it. What is WinRM? So uh, it's Win. Uh, uh, WinRM. in rm just a moment guys so let's continue guys win rm it is uh, uh, protocol okay so it's a protocol okay 
uh, is the Microsoft implementation of WS management protocol a simple okay it's implementation of Windows management in Windows which allows systems to access or exchange management information across a common network anyway so this is a protocol that you are used by different or various tools to connect remotely uh, to a machine and manage it for example you know all about Windows admin center so let's give you a, a little bit of this tool Windows admin center okay if we go and see this is Windows admin center this is a tool that we have used in our lab to connect remotely to machines and work on them this tool uses the WinRM protocol okay so for example if I use the Windows admin center to connect remotely to a machine so I need to do this using a username and the password and this username and the password should have rights and privileges on the remote machine so how this uh, verification is done so for example the Windows admin center will connect to a remote machine and then the remote machine will ask for a username and a password uh, to access it and to manage it so this is the, this process it is called authentication so the the remote machine so should authenticate the username and the password used to log into it and manage it okay so uh, this recommendation says that when uh, the application like Windows Admin Center use uh, the WinRM protocol to connect to a remote client uh, and uh, this will be done connecting to a remote client using a username and the password this should not be done using basic authentication or we should not use the basic authentication process so uh, the Windows Admin Center will send username and password to the remote machine okay and the remote machine will verify that this username and password have access to it and it could manage it this process uh, the passwords are sent in plain text okay so that the passwords are not encrypted so if there is a hacker it can he can uh, access or he can compromise the data and see the password so we have a client we have uh, or we have two clients the host and the guest or the the machine that we are using to connect remotely to another machine and the protocol used so the WinRM the protocol used to connect remotely to a machine should not use basic authentication okay so this should be done or should not be done we need to disable allow basic authentication using the WinRM protocol okay so this should not be done okay <laughs> So we need to check if it is in the registry just to make sure it is there so uh, so we should not allow basic authentication using the when uh, our uh, win RM protocol okay so we should disable this authentication so we have checked this in the group policy check this in the registry and then it's not there so we need to enable a group policy to disable the Windows RM uh, or Windows remote management protocol uh, to use basic authentication during the remote process or during the remote connection so you need to go to the remote management WinRM and then we need to open WinRM client and then allow basic authentication here we can see that allows to manage whether the Windows remote management client uses basic authentication this uses the enable WinRM client using basis basic authentication it's configured to use HTTP transport the username and password are sent over the network as clear text okay so we do not uh, need to do this okay so you can connect to a remote machine using a secure protocol not HTTP but HTTPS so we will uh, allow basic authentication to be disabled then 
Windows he is saying here that uh, the Windows RM client must not allow unencrypted traffic so the username and the password should be sent to the remote machine to verify it when they are sent it should be encrypted and the connection between the two clients using the WinRM protocol the, 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 the traffic should be encrypted so if I am connecting to a remote machine the connection uh, to, to the remote machine the, the connection to the remote machine and the data transferred from me to the remote machine should be encrypted Sh this sh we all should not allow unencrypted data unencrypted remote access to a system can allow sensitive data to be compromised windows remote management connections must be encrypted to prevent this so we need to do this we need to uh, make sure that the connection to our uh, remote machine is encrypted and the password and username sent to the machine to authenticate to it or to verify it uh, this also should be encrypted okay so we need to uh, disable uh, allow unencrypted data okay we need to allow or to to uh, disable unencrypted data okay so this is done and then we need to go this is for the uh, client so the client will not accept uh, communication or the remote client will not accept any com any communication uh, to uh, to the co remote client will not ac accept any communication unless the password sent to him is encrypted and the connection between the one initializing the remote connection is also encrypted this is for the client as for the windows service or the winrm service it also have the same steps to be followed so we have two things winrm client the client should not accept uh, unencrypted data and should not accept password sent uh, to him uh, unencrypted okay as the for the winrm service the service itself not the client okay also it should not uh, uh, use basic authentication and it should not transfer data uh, unencrypted so we have two parts winrm client and winrm service winrm client uh, we sh should not accept the basic authentication and unencrypted data winrm service the service itself of the protocol should not accept basic authentication or uh, unencrypted data okay so we'll do this allow basic authentication here is saying one thing okay that this could affect uh, office 365 so you need to make sure when you disable this kind of option it could uh, affect your office 365 connection or using the portal of the office 365 here is saying that uh, it should if you allow basic authentication uh, to the office 365 tenants or tenants you need to make sure uh, to disable or you can enable this option to connect to office 365 finish your work and then disable the protocol or disable this group policy again so you can enable it to connect to office 365 and then disable it after you finish he's saying that you can disable basic authentication once administration is complete and you should use a pow privilege access workstation uh, when you are connecting through to the office 365 or using your uh, or making administrative or system administrations on your uh, Active Directory. Anyway, so, so we should disable this thing, but uh, if you need to use it, you can use it and then disable it right later. Okay, so we can do this. Just a moment, guys. Okay. So there is two th as things I said it's uh, uh, WinRM client and WinRM service, and then WinRM service should not allow encrypt unencrypted data. So we have two parts: service, and then we should also disable basic authentication for the WinRM service and unencrypted data also for the WinRM service okay so we have finished these two and then we have done this also here is another thing the WinRM 
Service must not store run as credentials. Storage of administrative credentials would allow unauthorized access. This allowing the storage of run as credentials for Windows remote management will prevent them from being used with plugins. So for example, if you connect to a remote machine using the WinRM protocol and then you need to run a certain program or a service, certain service under a certain user, okay, uh, you should not uh, let the username and the password saved if you are doing this kind of thing so for example if you connect remotely to a machine and you need to run a certain program or a certain service under a certain user so we right click and tell him to run as different user and provide the username and the password these passwords should not be saved okay should not be saved to the remote machine okay so we need to disallow the storage of run as credentials for remote management uh, because it could be used in other uh, or with other plugs in anyway so we will do this we need to disallow uh, storage of administrative uh, privileges or or user uh, uh, usernames and passwords okay so let's see this allow here it is from storing run as it is this is the one so here we can see that it's saying that uh, will not allow the run as user okay as user run as password so you can run programs using a certain user or run programs using a certain password configuration values to be set for any plugin uh, will be erased okay the run as password configuration value will be erased from the credential store on this computer so if you run a certain program as a different user or run a program or software as different user the username and the password of this user should be it will be saved to the remote machine but by configuring this group policy it will not be saved it will be erased okay from the machine anyway so we can continue working with our uh, recommendations so we'll go and continue here remote management client the client not the service should not use digest authentication we have said before that to connect to a remote machine you need to use a username and the password that have rights on this machine so you send send the username and the password to the machine and the machine verifies that this user name and password have access to it and have uh, 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 enough rights to manage it okay this is called authentication this sh should not be you should not be done using basic authentication or digest authentication these are two ways to authenticate a user and the password to a computer okay to authenticate a username and the password to access a machine so digest authentication and basic authentication it's not strong as other options and maybe sub subject to man in the middle attacks so we should not use this kind of authentications to authenticate ourselves to a computer okay or to a domain should not not use digest uh, authentication or to use basic authentication so this is also one of the things to take into consideration <laughs> this allow digest authentication this is for the client okay so the client will not accept uh, digest authentication or basic authentication methods to verify the username and the password okay so this this allow digest authentication from the client so we need to digest authentication enable okay and then uh, we go and continue here windows 10 must be configured to prevent windows apps from being activated by voice while the system is locked so for example if you leave we have a group policy to activate a screen saver and lock the machine once the user left the machine without any activity for 15 minutes okay this is a group policy that we have configured earlier so there is a way that you can open the windows and run software using your voice while the system is locked Okay, while the lock or while uh, the lock screen is working okay this is what we are talking about so we need to prevent this kind of thing we should 
I think it's uh, best practice also to dis disable the voice commands as a whole, allowing Windows apps to be act activated by voice from the lock screen could allow for unauthorized use. Requiring login will ensure the apps are only used by authorized personnel, so you should not use your voice as a way of authenticating yourself to the machine. You should only use a password, a username, a PIN, your face recognition uh, software or your finger thumb authentication, but not the voice. The voice could be uh, manipulated and I think the uh, verification of the voice is not strong like the verification of the face or the verification of the fingerprint. Okay, anyway, so we need to, do, we need to disable application or Windows apps from being activated by voice while the lock screen is active okay he's saying that this requires windows 10 version 1903 or later it was not available for prior versions of windows okay so we need to go and check if in the registry if it's already enabled or not <coughs> and then if it's not enabled we need to or sorry if it's not disabled using the registry or it's, it's not there, we need to enable it using a group policy, or enable or disable this policy by tell him to enable and then default force deny, let apps activate with voice, we will enable it and tell him to force deny this policy. So we need to do this, we can go and let's see how much minutes, let's first of all see how we can do, this is app privacy and then we need to disable or let Windows app activate by voice when the system is locked uh, I think it's yes activate by voice this is it okay activate by voice we will double click on it and then tell him enable and then to tell him to force deny Okay, let's see how much minutes are left. Okay, it's for 51 minutes. Okay, we can continue working. So force deny and then the convenient pin for Windows 10 must be disabled. This controls whether a domain user can sign in using a convenient pin to prevent enabling password. Uh, what is convenience? I know the pin, but is what is convenience? convenience pin okay what is a convenient pin uh, password stuffers are convenient sign in pin they are controlled by the turn on convenient pin sign in group policy made this default behavior since windows 10 the security offered by the default behavior can be decreased by enable a convenient pin password stuffers are convenient send sign in anyway so this is a pin or a kind of a pin uh, that uh, it's not secure to use it in a domain so he's trying to saying to us to disable using pins convenient pins to access the domain <coughs> So I think we can need to, we need to to know more what is a convenient pin, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, let's go. What is a convenient pin? Let's see what <laughs> is Windows convenient pin. Uh, it's saying that it's a pin, but somehow I think it's not uh, uh, a strong pin. So he's saying that you should disable whether a user can sign in using a pin. Okay, in the domain, so we should disable this. I prefer also not to use a pin uh, to access the domain. Okay, so turn on pin sign in should be disabled. <laughs> we need to see this using the registry let's 
so let's see if it is enabled in the registry the pin or the convenient pin in it's if, if, if it is disabled and this appears in the registry so we can see it's not there so we need to uh, disable this group policy to turn on convenient pin sign in we didn't find this key allow domain pin login so you will not be or to disable accessing the domain using a pin okay so I think this is not allowed here especially convenient pin I think this is a kind of pins it's not the, no the, the normal pins or for example used for Windows Halo system okay so now allow domain pin I think it is uh, zero okay let's see here yes it is disabled by the way okay if we can go a little bit further here it is disabled already I have it in my domain disabled and it is already in the registry this key it is already in the registry but we will show you all how we can do this if it's not uh, in your uh, group policy or it's not enabled we'll go to the login and tell him turn on pin <coughs> sorry turn on pin sign and it will be disabled <coughs> sorry guys uh, turn on pin okay so we'll disable this policy and then we can continue working we have uh, Windows Inc workspace must be configured to disallow access over the lock uh, Windows Inc it is a, a kind of uh, if you have a pen you can work on the screen this is Windows Inc okay so he's saying that you could not use Windows Inc when there is a lock screen so it must be configured to disallow access above the lock so if you have a lock screen okay you could not use the uh, windows inc uh, option to work okay secures windows inc which contains application and features oriented toward pen computing or pen using a pen okay so what is windows inc windows inc workspace Uh, software suit that contain application and features oriented toward pen computing as introduced this is something I said before it's a pen okay so we need to disable this uh, or to have the ink option or the Windows ink option to be working when you have a lock or you have your lock screen working <laughs> so we can go and do this also from the configuration first we need to check if it is if it, if it is in the registry and then if it's not there we need to allow the sync allow workspace ink space so this is not there we need to go and disable this option it's called windows ink i think it's it is there in the windows components maybe yes think windows components and then we have windows ink Windows Ink workspace and then allow Windows Ink I think this is it no allow Windows Ink workspace allow Windows Ink workspace to enable and set options on but this allow access above block or access above lock screen okay so enable and then allow this allow on but al this allow uh, access above the lock Windows 10 should not be configured to prevent users from receiving uh, suggestions for third party and additional applications so we should disable users to get suggestions by third party and additional applications uh, uh, for example some he, he is saying that Windows Spotlight features may suggest applications and content from third party software publishers in addition to Microsoft apps and contents we all know that Windows Spotlight it is uh, like a screensaver this is a service in Windows that will give you the option to have a screen saver that is working with some uh, features okay so sometimes this spotlight feature will suggest for you other uh, providers to give you uh, similar screen savers or similar services this should be disabled if you are in a military uh, organization this should be considered as a security or an issue okay <laughs> 
because maybe a hacker will uh, can uh, work with this option and uh, provide uh, a URL or provide a, a location and this location is infected or something so we need to disable this kind of options okay so we need to just wait for a moment guys okay so we need to uh, disable this kind of options okay we should not give our or windows applications should not uh, suggest outside providers or, or outside applications to users to use to you uh, or outside services to be used by the users okay so here we should do this cloud content so we should not uh, let the windows suggest providers to provide free services or paid services okay to our users we should control this because we don't you we don't know all of the providers of all of the services uh for our users or for our windows okay <coughs> cloud content we need to turn off or turn not no, turn off custom experience we need to do not suggest windows spotlight but i think this is in the users section not in the computer it is in not in the group policy computer section it is in the users uh, configuration group policy section so we go to administrative templates and then it goes windows components and then <coughs> <coughs> we should go to cloud content and then do not suggest third party content okay to users okay so this is one and then this is where we need to stop here windows 10 explode protection system level vegetation that execution prevention must be on this is an option that you should enable in windows and it will protect you against uh, uh, di uh, different malware and different things this is enabled by default in windows okay and this is uh, enabled by the windows defender security system or the windows defender firewall okay or the windows defender antivirus so i will stop here at this point because we need to uh, explain it more further in the upcoming videos so hope this video formed to you all and until the video number 10 from this series we have stopped at the the minute 29 19 of this video is informative of you all and the like to thank you all for viewing thank you so much